the release of the Huawei Mate 60 Pro series has sparked attention both domestically and internationally, with many closely following Huawei's every move. People have dissected the Mate 60 Pro, repeatedly studying and examining the suppliers of internal components, investigating the sources of technology, and keeping a close eye on the technological developments in China's semiconductor industry. The introduction of the Kirin 9000's chip has injected a strong impetus into China's semiconductor industry, signifying the gradual replacement of imported parts by the domestic supply chain, transitioning from behind the scenes to the forefront of the market. The breakthrough capabilities of China's semiconductor industry are directly related to an individual. Some have evaluated him as follows, the changes he has brought to the country may not be evident in 2001, 2002, or 2003, but he has played a crucial role in the development of 2010, 2020, and even 2030. He is the protagonist we want to share with you today, Jiang Shangzhou. Let's begin. Jiang Shangzhou was born in 1947 in Longyang City, Fujian Province. In 1965, he entered the Department of Radio Electronics at Tsinghua University, and in 1978, he continued his studies in information technology for a master's degree at Tsinghua. In 1979, Jiang Shangzhou was awarded a scholarship to study abroad and went to ETH Zurich in Switzerland. After obtaining a PhD in digital mobile communication technology in 1987, after eight years of studying abroad, he returned to China and devoted himself to serving his country. Upon returning to China, he found that there were too few units specializing in mobile communications in the country. That same year, with the development boom in Hainan Special Economic Zone and Yangpu, Jiang Shangzhou moved to Sonia, Hainan Province, becoming one of the first pioneers during Hainan's early development. We all know now that Sonia in Hainan is China's foremost holiday resort destination, and Jiang Shangzhou is the central figure in making Sonia comparable to Hawaii in the United States. In 1997, Jiang Shangzhou was transferred from Hainan to Shanghai where he became the deputy director of the Shanghai Economic Commission. And so begins Jiang Shangzhou's story with the semiconductor industry. The semiconductor industry in Shanghai originated in 1958, with the establishment of Shanghai Component Factory, Shanghai Electronic Tube Factory, Shanghai Wireless Radio 14th Factory, and others. In 1968, Shanghai Wireless Radio 14th Factory successfully produced the first PMOS circuit in China. During the same year, Shanghai Wireless Radio 19th Factory was established and rapidly developed, competing with Beijing's Dongguang Electronic Factory to become the dominant forces in China's IC industry. However, when discussing the rise of the IC industry in Shanghai, people often immediately think of the proposal in 1998 that significantly influenced the city's industrial fate, and the proposer, 51-year-old Jiang Shangzhou, in 1997. When Jiang Shangzhou was transferred from Hainan to become the deputy director of the Shanghai Economic Commission, the largest industrial city in China was undergoing the pains of state-owned enterprise reforms and massive layoffs of a million workers. At that time, a consensus was formed among the decision-makers, Shanghai's future relies on high technology and emerging industries. Facing a critical decision for the new era, Jiang Shangzhou took on an important task. Conducting research on the development of high-tech industries such as integrated circuits, modern biomedicine, and new materials, in the hope of identifying strategic emerging industries for Shanghai. During a year-long research period, Jiang Shangzhou discovered that there was a tremendous domestic demand for integrated circuits in China, but the supply capacity was extremely weak, especially in semiconductor production and key equipment manufacturing for testing. It was based on this realization that in 1998, Jiang Shangzhou proposed the development of the Zhongjiang Microelectronics Development Zone in Pudong, covering an area of 22 square kilometers, three times the size of the Hsinchu Science Park in Taiwan. This area would later become the core of Shanghai's IC industry. He led delegations to Silicon Valley three times for investigation and investment promotion. During a press conference held for students in Silicon Valley, a meeting room that could accommodate over 100 people was packed with more than 300 attendees. Jiang Shangzhou passionately described the prospects of Shanghai's integrated circuit industry development, inspiring many Chinese in Silicon Valley who were concerned about domestic semiconductor development. Some even made on-the-spot decisions to return to Shanghai, 
Moved by Jiang Shangzhou's passionate speech and patriotic sentiments in this environment, individuals like Ma Qiyuan, Yin Jiao, and Zhong Ayujing decided to return to China. In 2000, under Jiang Shangzhou's enthusiastic invitation and active promotion, Zhong Ayujing and his team came to Shanghai for investigation. They ultimately decided to establish SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, in Zhongjiang, Pudong, Shanghai. This was the first integrated circuit company to settle in Zhongjiang, marking a critical milestone in Shanghai's semiconductor history. On August 1, 2000, the largest and most technologically advanced chip foundry in mainland China was established. Zhong Ayujing devoted all the knowledge he acquired in the first half of his life to Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, SMIC. When forming the team, over 300 engineers from TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, and other companies followed Zhong Ayujing to SMIC. Additionally, over 100 experts from various foreign countries joined, creating a highly capable and powerful team. Zhong Ayujing also strongly promoted collaborative development with partner companies, assisting in product testing, and gradually establishing a well-functioning supply chain system for SMIC within the context of the development of the domestic industry. One year later, in September 2001, SMIC's 8-inch production line was officially completed, setting a world record for the fastest chip factory construction, and reducing the technology gap between mainland China's integrated circuit industry and international leading technology by half a generation. In 2003, Zhong Ayujing led SMIC to break through the 90 nanometer process, propelling China's chips into the nanometer level for the first time. In 2004, SMIC built China's first 12-inch wafer chip production line in Beijing. In 2005, SMIC's sales revenue surpassed chartered semiconductor manufacturing in Singapore, ranking third in the world semiconductor foundry. In 2006, Jiang Shangzhou was appointed as an independent non-executive director of SMIC. However, amidst this rapid progress, SMIC faced hidden concerns. In 2003, on the eve of SMIC's IPO preparation, TSMC filed a lawsuit against SMIC, alleging theft of trade secrets. This initiated a six-year-long legal dispute, from 2003 to 2004. TSMC sued SMIC three times in succession. In 2005, the two parties reached their first out of court settlement, with SMIC compensating TSMC with 175 million US dollars. In 2006, on the eve of SMIC's financing, TSMC filed the fourth lawsuit against SMIC in the United States, citing violation of the settlement agreement. By 2009, as SMIC was on the verge of mass producing 45 nanometer process technology, and China was about to catch up with the world's advanced level for the first time, in November, the US federal court in California ruled in favor of TSMC in the face of aggressive litigation. Under the relentless litigation, SMIC had no choice but to accept the outcome of paying settlement funds, transferring shares to TSMC, and founder Zhong Ayujing resigning. In addition, including SMIC, and China's wafer fabs such as Wuhan Xinxin and Chengdu Chengxin, all stopped the production and development of DRAM chips from January 1, 2010. China's first mature DRAM industry came to an end. In 2009, Zhong Ayujing left SMIC, and Jiang Shangzhou was appointed chairman in a critical moment. During his tenure, Jiang Shangzhou invited top talents in the industry like Wang Ningguo and Yang Shining to join SMIC divesting non-core businesses, enabling SMIC to turn losses into gains in 2010. However, during this time, Jiang Shangzhou's health deteriorated. On June 27, 2011, due to a recurrence of lung cancer and ineffective treatment, Jiang Shangzhou passed away. Before his passing, Jiang Shangzhou had brought his classmate Zhong Wenyi from Tsinghua University's Department of Electronics to the board of SMIC. After Jiang Shangzhou's death, Zhong Wenyi took on the role of chairman and acting CEO of SMIC. As events unfolded, people came to know that SMIC went through numerous changes in top management and leadership. It was only after Liang Mengsong joined SMIC that the company stabilized its development. In terms of semiconductor technology, we don't have to excel in everything. 
As long as we lead in a few areas internationally, we can pave our own path of development, Jiang Shangzhou said in 2010. Today, this small chip has once again brought Sino-US relations to an unprecedented level of tension. We do not know how the situation will develop. What awaits SMIC and mainland China's semiconductor industry will be one challenge after another. However, as an ancient Chinese saying goes, the path is long and winding, but perseverance will lead to success, persist without giving up, and the future is promising. Our sharing ends here today. See you next time.